Corporate Finance Presentation, The Optimal Capital Structure. Get ready, it's time to take your chance with corporate finance. Here we are in our weighted average cost of capital, the WACC or WAC formula. We started off this section by introducing the WAC formula and thinking about it conceptually and then going into some major components of this formula in more depth. Now we're going to go into a little bit more detail about the WAC formula in concept and why this weighted average component is going to be important. In other words, we started off in general thinking about the components of this formula, breaking them out, the financing of the organization into two main categories, that being debt financing and equity financing, thinking about the concept of the weighting, which includes this part of the calculation, the concept of the weighting here, and then we considered them in a table format, considering the, the current weighting as well. Then we went into more detail to think about the calculation for the cost of debt and equity, which is going to be this component of the equation and this component of the equation. And in the table, we calculate these then down below as well. And then we think about our, once we plug that into the formula, we're taking into consideration the cost of debt and the cost of equity in terms that are somewhat comparable. And we're basically weighting them, taking into consideration our current capital structure to give us our WAC, our weighted average cost of capital, which is the minimum rate that would be kind of like our discount rate or our expected rate of return for particular projects. So that's going to be the calculations of it. Let's think about why that works a little bit more in depth. We thought about how to get to these particular components. Now we're kind of thinking about what, why or what is the optimal weights between basically the debt and equity financing a little bit in more depth as to why the WAC formula would be put together the way it'd be put together. So remember, the concept here is we have the assets. This is a basically our balance sheet that we have. How do we finance those assets? We have debt or equity type of financing. Typically, if we had no debt, we would finance it through equity, through the operations of the organization and through the selling of stocks and so on. And the But then we have the debt up here that we could also finance, taking out loans and bonds. But the debt and the debt is usually considered to be cheaper or could be cheap financing options for uh, the debt and therefore there could be an optimal structure between the debt and equity so in other words as debt goes up we have certain risks that are going to be increasing with the debt and we could then have a risk of bankruptcy and also the return that the shareholders are going to want when they have more risk due to the fact of debt increasing could impact the required rate of return on the equity side of things. So of course, the question then is how much debt to be taken on? Equity is usually going to be more expensive versus the debt. But then as the debt increases, the risk is going to increase. What's going to basically be the optimal level? That's when we get into our weighted average cost of capital, the WAC type of calculation as a way to get to that, that nice spot for the maximum types of returns. Our goal then is to maintain a minimum cost of capital by financing between the options of debt, preferred stock, and common stock. Now we're gonna be focusing mainly here on debt and the common stock, the preferred stock being another kind of equity financing, but we wanna basically think of that as a kind of leading into a simplified way to get into the common stock. But conceptually, let's think of our two categories, that being debt financing, and then the equity financing. So the factor for the capital mix decision is assessing the current capital structure. So we want to think about what the current capital structure is. And then once taking that into consideration, deciding if the current structure is optimal as we make decisions going forward in the future for financing options between the debt and equity. Here we are in our graph. We have the cost of capital percent on the vertical axis. We have the debt asset ratio on the horizontal. Lines include the cost of equity, weighted average cost of capital, and the cost of debt. We're focusing in on the weighted average cost of capital. We can see that this is a U-shaped line. And where we would like to be is at the bottom point of this line, that then minimizing the cost of capital percent. So when you think about this just in terms of a question, if there's a test question on it, or you're thinking about this just in terms of a graph theoretically, then of course we're going to say, well, I want to minimize the cost of capital percent. I want to be at this minimum point, which is basically the idea of our weighted average cost of capital type of calculation. And then you get into more depth in terms of like, well, why would that be the case? 
and it can get quite complex when you think about you know why would that be the case but a short answer some would would say would be that it's going to be a tax impact would be the result of this because when you pull in the debt then you have that tax implication with regards to the debt making the debt cheaper so for example there is an argument that would say something like this if you had a world with basically no taxes and you're looking at the cost of equity as you rise debt as you raise the debt it might look something like this so the cost of equity then increasing as the debt then going up cost of equity then increasing due to the fact that as debt goes up the people that are the shareholders are going to to want to have a higher return based on a higher required return based on the more risk that is going up as the debt goes up the argument then being that the weighted average cost of capital in that situation would be basically a straight line uh, in in that situation because as the debt goes up it's going to be counterbalanced off by the the increase in the required rate of return in a world with no taxes but if you're talking about a, a world with taxes then we actually have a decrease you're going to end up in result with as you take on the debt you then have the uh, weighted average cost of capital decreasing that would be beneficial then require resulting in returns being greater uh, for the shareholders uh, as you as you take on debt to some point in time and then it's going to go back up again now that counterbalancing why would that happen what is that counterbalancing taking place well you got the tax impact because obviously again the interest is going to be deductible uh, for the taxes but then at some point in time then as the as you take on more debt people the shareholders are going to want that higher return and at, at some point in time also you could get to where the the cost of debt increases because the risk goes up and you could call that like the risk of bankruptcy if people have less faith that the debt will be able to be repaid then the required rate of return will go up and at some point in time the agencies that are, are rating you you could go down from like a triple a rating to a double a rating or something like that which would result in more risk the more risk would actually increase the interest rates so now you have a situation where the interest rates on the debt could then go up so at this point in, in time when you get over onto this side increasing the, the debt past a certain point you have a greater risk let's say a bankruptcy uh, that could happen and once the wheels start turning on the bankruptcy side of things it can get out of it can get out of control a fairly quickly because again if your rating agency goes down or something like that and then your cost of debt then increases that could be a problem so what you want to do to maximize the goal then would be to be somewhere down here to take on the debt to maximize but be possibly this is a fairly flat point of the curve be somewhere on this tide maybe <laughs> of the flat point of the curve to be more safe uh, but still take on the debt in order to maximize the return so that's kind of conceptually what what's happening with the idea of the of the weighted average or the weight between the debt and and the and the equity the debt is often something that could be a cheaper but uh you want to get that basically uh, ideal weighting between the two that nice balance between the two to maximize so again what you want to basically know this for like a test question or something like that you want to know where this point is going to be if if you want to you know break this down theory wise like look at models there's a lot of information in terms of exactly why this would would be the case and calculations for it can get somewhat complex so it's it's interesting to see that but the basic idea we got the two the two components that we can use for the financing of the organization debt equity there's some kind of ideal component for some reasons and some of those reasons may be the tax impact although it can get quite complex once you start digging into it and your ideal point would be although not always the easiest thing to calculate but theoretically makes sense that the ideal point would be some ideal mix between uh, the two and the weighted average cost of capital is an attempt to find that point that range so a company may sell common stock when prices are high to minimize the cost of equity a balance between equity and debt is needed to get the minimum cost of capital that's going to be the objective capital budgeting decisions the cost of capital for each source of funds is necessary for a good budgeting decision so we got to figure what the cost of the capital is for the different sources 
the required rate of return equals the weighted average cost of capital, otherwise known as the WAC. That's going to be our required rate of return. And then the stock price for the company should increase or at least stay the same as long as the company earns the cost of capital. So as long as the company is making good decisions and earning then their cost of capital, you would think that would be representative of people saying that the company is, you know, doing a good job and earning what they should and taking on the financing that is appropriate. And therefore, the stock either stays the same or hopefully increases due to that, the market then reflecting the decision making process of the organization.